Welcome to Strength in the Numbers. My name is Andrew Codd, accountant, author, and commercial finance entrepreneur. And it's my job each week to bring you leaders in finance and business and deconstruct with them their real stories, insights, and hard-won lessons into practical advice on the key strengths and qualities you need to remain relevant in accounting and finance today, as well as the steps you can begin to take to elevate the impact you make to have a fun, successful, and rewarding career in accounting and finance. Now let's go over to the show. Yeah, because if you try and be somebody that you're not, you'll you'll just get you'll just get caught out eventually, won't you? This is just one of the many insights on how we as accountants and finance professionals should be successfully dealing with other stakeholders, partners, and customers. And it comes from this week's guest mentor, Wendy Thompson, on today's episode, where we also deconstruct learning from the failures of other businesses and doing it right for ourselves how to run our own business and the process of making things happen and growing it. So always having a small business on the side, alignment of various stars and planets, and also the support of family. It's quite key, actually. A good point that Wendy makes. And finally, the challenges that clients are facing as they find it hard in dealing with the numbers and where we get our comparative advantage as finance professionals there. So look, really hope you enjoyed this episode. I did really really appreciate Wendy going through some sort of uh, more challenging failures in the early part of her career sharing them with us and how that developed into her actually becoming stronger and developing a what she would probably call a dream business for herself now and where she's really servicing clients and customers uh, that she wants to be working with and adding loads loads and loads of value for them and as always if you enjoy the show remember to subscribe we're on all the major platforms itunes stitcher soundcloud youtube and spotify and also share with your friends and colleagues so that they can benefit and maybe avoid some of the pains that our guest mentors uh, go through but also finding the pathway to success much faster with the finance and accounting so look that's enough for me so without further ado over to wendy and the show Wendy, welcome to the show. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Nice to talk to you. Likewise. And look, we've, we've shared a few laughs just as we were warming up there. But some of our audience uh, maybe not as familiar with your story. So would you mind maybe sharing a bit behind your background in accounting and finance? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so I studied um, accounting and finance at Manchester University. Well, many years ago now. I didn't really know what I wanted to do uh, after school, as as my daughter is also now discovering, um, and a lot of us don't. I, I got an A in A level math, so accounting and finance seems like you know a, a suitable thing to study. Did and then sort of started a series of jobs um, that I've sort of done over the last twenty odd twenty odd years or so. Um, started off uh, working in a bank went to a company called the accident group in uh, manchester in the uk which uh, for people who've, who are from the uk may, may remember uh, famously went into liquidation by sending all their staff text messages uh, they, they were the ones that had oh. the, had this, this strap line uh, where there's a blame there's a claim it was like a, an accident um oh. sort of claim company and uh, i remember at the time thinking not sure that I really agree with this this company's uh, business model, but you know they gave me a job and I was working in payroll and management accounts. So, but yeah, it um, it went spectacularly bust. So that was I was like my first lesson in how not. To- oh my word! Yeah. So then I moved then to well, it was Safeway when I started, but um, they subsequently were taken over by Morrison's, a supermarket. Chain. So I've worked in their one of their distribution depots for a few years. Unfortunately, that depot also then closed. <laughs> this seems to be a, oh. this seems to be a running theme in my in my working life. Where I worked, it either sort of closes down or makes me redundant. So worked there for uh, about four years. Moved then to a group of um, children's nurseries where I was a finance manager um, we looked after 34 I think it was um, children's nurseries um, around wow. um, sort of around the northwest of um, England and also up in Scotland and that I, I really really enjoyed that job I stayed there for sort of uh, eight or nine years I think it was basically working with all the individual nurseries working you know help, uh, helping them with their sort of uh, 
all the, all their financial issues basically um a lot of it was uh, kind of a sort of credit control kind of role uh, collecting fees from parents um mm. and that sort of thing then moved into that that was a job that uh, I just left it didn't actually uh, close down or make me redundant <laughs> 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 amazingly um moved then to a large corporate very corporate role uh, as a management accountant um and this this was the one that sort of made me sort of really question what I actually wanted to do I was working sort of 10 hours a day you know it was it was hard hard work it was constant deadlines it was it was really it was just really full on and I, it really started to impact on my family life um, my children were sort of early teens at that point and I was just you know I wasn't getting home till late you know I wasn't I couldn't go to anything that they you know school things that they needed and I, and I really started to think I don't think I, this is not for me. Um, I, I need to sort of get out and really decide what on earth I want to do. I then moved to a group of pubs and restaurants, uh, which was much less corporate. In fact, if anything, that was um, complete chaos. <laughs> it was very, I think the hospitality industry is a little bit like that anyway. It was all very mm-hmm. much people making decisions without asking anyone else. Yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit chaotic, um, but I've, I sort of put a load of systems in place. Yeah, I, I I enjoyed that job, but in the again in the hospitality world, competition is absolutely fierce, um, and the the group that I worked for went from eight pubs, uh, well they were like sort of gastro pub restaurants, mm. um, and one by one they had to close them um, because they just weren't they just weren't making money. The yeah. you know they the staffing costs were huge, and um, it was it was just. It, it was managed in the wrong way, really. Unfortunately, that company uh, went into liquidation as well. So again, I was um, left without a job, and that was that was earlier this year. Um, and at that point, I, th- I really sort of sat down and started to question what what was I going to do. Um, I knew I didn't want to go back to a large company, um, but mm. I knew that I could do that if I needed to. So the idea started growing in my little mind um, that w- maybe I could do something you know for myself um and I and I realized that I'd learned so much from working for all these different companies that I could actually bring it all together set up my my own company so I decided to uh, set up my own very small accounting practice <laughs> uh, I am at the the smaller end of <laughs> the accounting and finance world so I created my business which is uh, called Blue Box and I um, specialize in other small businesses so anyone who is either just about to start or has recently started their own small business who is slightly nervous about the the numbers and and what you know what they have to do to be compliant um, and I work with them I do tend to work mainly with women that wasn't my intention but um, that just seems to be how it's kind of happened um, and I think because I've sort of um, I've experienced the same issues that they have over time. Uh, Things like, you know, childcare when the children are little and flexible working and having to sort of juggle both and uh, both children and work. And obviously these these things men have to deal with as well. Um, But I do find that primarily women are sort of drawn to me because of this. Yeah, that's that's sort of how it's happened, really. And it's now started to pick up. Uh, I'm sort of finding clients who are in a similar position to myself, really, new business, um, and just need some guidance uh, for their accounts. And, yeah, that's kind of where I'm up to at the moment. Um, So it's still very early days for me, but I'm absolutely loving every minute of it. It's it's great because when when you started the story of your career and, and took us through that and, and thank you for doing that Wendy, it didn't it didn't sound like it sort of started off on a positive step. But I'm in traditional sense, okay. But yeah. I suppose you have to go through those experiences to really appreciate where you are now, right? Yeah, and I, and I've learned more. I've actually learned as much about how not to run a business <laughs> um, as I have how how to run a business because the companies that I've worked for that have actually failed. I can see exactly what went wrong and having experienced that, I think I can use that obviously going forward to advise people how, how not to do it. 
Oh, oh, and that, by the way, that's part of this sh- show is actually we want to share with people what works well and what doesn't work uh, as well. And and like sometimes you have to go through that pain. I mean, when you mentioned the sort of the gastro pubs, I mean, that's a very competitive industry and there's nothing worse than actually having to close uh, restaurants or, or eateries or outlets. Like having having done it myself and knowing the feeling that that brings on you, even if we are like in finance, there are people jobs on the line and like if you go to that feeling you're going to do whatever you can to try and avoid that and make sure things work in future so you know it was heartbreaking and and in finance obviously i had a full picture of what was happening and i knew that you know these these businesses and these these outlets were not performing and all i could do was sort of break it down and explain it to the owners um, and they did everything that they could as well but ultimately i mean there was all sorts of factors out of their control really but um ultimately yeah they they had to sort of fold and you see it happening all the time you know restaurants um pubs and i think that particular industry you need to have a very very strong business model to make it work completely and and you know what another thing is taste change over time as well so it's 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 trying to be able to keep on top of those those changes as things happen it was it could be a great idea at one time and then it's just um it's working and then all of a sudden it doesn't i mean um so and, and then i suppose like in terms of your your journey you know you know you're running your own business i mean that's quite a big i know a step for some people i imagine some of our audience are thinking the same whether they're in I know a small finance team or they're in a large enterprise team and thinking of making the jump into into running their own practice doesn't matter you know like everyone's going to start small at some point I mean how did you come to that decision I mean what was sort of the the process you went through I've always had a sort of burning desire to have my own business sort of somewhere deep down but throughout the last however many years it's just never really been the right time amongst all those different jobs you know I did all the usual family stuff I got married I had two children I've then subsequently got divorced I was a single parent for a while I've now got a new partner and it's all those things happening at the same time I I, I probably couldn't have done it because I just wouldn't have Mm. had the the wherewithal to actually sit down and do it but it just seems that now whether all the stars have aligned or something but uh, it just seems suddenly the right time to do it and I, I have had other small businesses you know on the on the side throughout I mean only you know when I when the kids were first born I was trying to I, I set up a little business with a friend making um like baby baby blankets and baby oh. so we did a you know a few like craft fairs those, those kind of things and I've actually I have actually also got another business which is don't laugh um but um a cat sitting business <laughs> <laughs> wait don't tell, tell me yeah you might you love cats then do you <laughs> from my accounting business but so I've, I've had experience of running little small businesses myself anyway and I think I've always sort of wanted that to be more and it and it's just never been the right time so for me this time you know I've got a really supportive partner and family um I feel much more settled in my home life I just decided to go for it and it's absolutely yeah. terrifying <laughs> and I, you know <laughs> taking a, a huge drop in in pay all that stuff but I've always got a sort of backup plan in my mind that you know if it doesn't work out you know, I go to a, an agency and I say, "Look, I need to, I need to get back into that that corporate world again." And that, you know, I just have to do it. But at the minute, I'm, that's not happening because working, you know, working my little socks off to make it work. Yeah. I think I, I don't know what's happened, but something inside me has just I've just got this sudden like fire inside me to make this work because I'm absolutely loving it and I feel like I should have done it years ago. Good, I was just about to ask you that actually when they oh, it was, it's like it's funny I think it feels like you've that inner entrepreneur in you and then you've got that accountant as well that just needs the conditions to be just about right a bit like Goldilocks in the old porridge <laughs> yes, you know and it's just like well I've got the support network now I've got all the experience this is where I know I can help people this is this is where people find and, and like the story comes together and 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 here you are right but i also think it's important right you know you sort of at least highlighting some of the um, the challenges when you're starting out 
you know, in terms of the impact on, you know, you're giving up sometimes if some people are giving up a good salary. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, people think, oh, I was doing 10 hours in the corporate world or whatever. It's still a lot of work to get it off the ground. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I knew we were sort of talking about earlier, like going from zero to, to starting it. I think you were sort of saying, you know, you've enjoyed using LinkedIn. Is that right? I've so yeah so I, because I'm so new I haven't got you know uh, my I've got a, my website's up and running but it's not um sort of attracting inquiries yet because it's just not you know yet in the uh, in the, the search engines you know I'm going I'm doing all the networking events that sort of thing but the, I, I needed to sort of get get myself out there for me um LinkedIn has been working really well for me um, I'd had a I had had an account on LinkedIn for years, but I've just never really used it. I didn't really get it, but I decided that I needed to. I needed to learn how to use it properly. Did a, a five day challenge um, a couple of months ago. <laughs> Started to suddenly understand it more, and for me, that's where most of my leads and inquiries are coming from at the moment. So I kind of put myself out there as this kind of <laughs> uh, gin drinking, cat loving accountant. <laughs> kind of contradicts itself gets all off of being a little bit unprofessional sometimes but I'm actually engaging with uh, loads and loads of my ideal clients out there and it's 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 really helping me and uh you know I just post about things that pop into my head or you know throughout the day there's a lot of people out there that seem to sort of connect with me through that so yeah for me LinkedIn's working great in the minute and obviously that's how me and yourself came across each other <laughs> Exactly. I love the way you brought that back around, Wendy. <laughs> and, uh, and I suppose, you know, those that are, I mean, like I, I, I'm a big uh, supporter of the LinkedIn platform. And, uh, I, you know, I think it's great to have, I mean, more and more people in our profession on it, sharing what's working, what's not. Um, I probably some, would take offense if someone said something was unprofessional. I mean, that's just their view, but it, it, it works for the people that are following you and engaging with you. So so keep keep doing it, Wendy, you know, um, so I'd say. On that one is the same message to the rest of our audience. Yeah, sure. I find that accountants, and I'm being very general here, but um, sort of particularly the old school traditional accountants can be quite scared of technology. And I know <laughs> quite a few accountants. In fact, I know one particular accountant who still uses like handwritten trial balances and ledgers and doesn't even use any kind of online software at all and I think if you're going to sort of keep up with technology in particular I think you just have to embrace it and um, I I use a cloud-based accounting system and I think that's really helped as well so I I use I mean zero I use and and free agent so um, I think basically we have to embrace technology and so if social media is part of that then yeah that's that's definitely the way forward. It is, in, it is interesting. It'll be funny, like, if in 10 years or 15 years' time that social media and some of these uh, online platforms actually make it into our accounting syllabuses for the generation coming along and whether they adopt them straight away. Because, like, we've seen the paper basis. You know, in terms of, in terms of what, you know, the people you're engaged with on LinkedIn and your your clients, your customers, like, I mean, what, what are the main challenges that they're facing in your mind at the moment, Wendy? I tend to find that people are just uh, are quite nervous about fig- numbers and figures. And now I don't know whether that's, but then they don't really like to admit it because I think that if you're starting a new business, you sort of expected to have a financial plan and, and know exactly your, what your forecasts are. And a lot of small business owners, just they're just not confident that they understand how to do that but they don't know who to go to to ask so if they if they went into a tr- your traditional office based accountant and said that they'd feel like they'd perhaps be laughed at whereas I'm I'm very much like look you don't have to know anything you t- you tell me what you want to do I'll help you do it I'll I'll get you set up with um, a, a simple accounting system that you mm-hmm. can understand that makes it easy for you to invoice your clients and collect your payments I'll do your returns for you and I'll just support you. And I, I think people just seem to like that because this, they're, they're just a little bit nervous. And I, I don't know whether it's, I mean, it goes back to school again, doesn't it? You know, the people that sort of say, oh, I hate maths. I can't do it. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I didn't pass, I failed my maths. And I think that almost kind of sort of carries on into, into adult life. So you can 
you can have all the creative ideas in the world and you can have amazing ideas for your business but you can just still be quite nervous about actually you know how much to charge how much you know how much to pay for this that and the other and um i think that's where i'm sort of slotting in so i i, I just kind of advise these you know these people and um people seem to appreciate my sort of i'm fairly sort of down to earth and I, I very much a people person so I find working with people with their own businesses absolutely fascinating so I'm just I'm really interested to hear about their business how it works and what I can do to help them make it better so yeah I think that, that those seem to be the issues that I find that clients face and it is at a very basic level I mean look I mean I suppose it's a fair point it's a basic level but I think the the lessons you're sharing are quite applicable to those in sort of like a corporate or enterprise type finance organizations and the, the main the main thing you said there was it you know you got to be engaging in terms of with people and working with people okay so it's more like a partnership yeah and then the second second point you made is like people are still uncomfortable with numbers just an interesting thought for you I mean like um like from an evolutionary perspective, numbers are not a natural thing for us human beings. I mean, they're only invented, what, probably what, a thousand, two thousand years ago, if that, you know, to, to track things, you know, by the, I don't know, is it the, over in Arabia somewhere? Yeah. So like, you know, it's like our brains haven't really caught up. So for people who are nervous at numbers, that's quite a natural way to feel. And um, it's quite unnatural to be like an accountant in that way that we can actually understand the numbers. Yeah, I mean, I've so just people... always sort of taken it for granted that, um, yeah, I, I, you do. know, people people are the same as me. And I've always found maths and numbers just easy. It's the only subject I was ever any good at at school. <laughs> so, so we're just wired right strange, Wendy, you know. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> So, so it does help being able to interact with people, and and like, look, there's, so there's a lot. Most of the population out there will actually be really uncomfortable with numbers. It's and um, you know, it's a really powerful gift to be able to help them understand that. I mean, like you say, even in even in larger businesses, I I've worked, well, I've worked as management accountant for a long time, and I used to sort of sit with, you know, heads of department and you know, really quite senior managers and explain the department um, numbers. For the month or whatever and they'd be they'd just go I've, I've no idea I don't understand it I don't get it and I, <laughs> well you need to <laughs> so so like you know you know and then and then I think where a lot of our professions having success in in later times and like what it sounds like in your business when it's actually translating what does it all mean you know and helping helping them take positive actions about it to go yeah. fix it so yeah so I mean I mean look really appreciate you giving um, such great advice to our audience I suppose in terms of yourself, like, I mean, what's been the best bit of advice you've ever received? Basically to be, just be, it sounds stupid, but just to be yourself. I'm, as I say, I'm very much a people person. And I, even coming before coming on this podcast, I was a little bit sort of nervous about, should I be, should I be some, you know, slightly more professional <laughs> than I maybe come across? And I, and I actually asked on LinkedIn about, you know, any tips for the podcast. And everyone said, just be yourself. And I think yeah. that is actually the best advice that anyone could give anyone. Because if you're not being yourself, then you're giving a false image of, of who you really are. That's that's my best advice. <laughs> I think that's great advice for our audience. And I think it's um, I think it's particularly uh, important for those starting out as well. Yeah. Is don't feel like you have to, 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 to compromise yourself your values just to fit in everywhere you know yeah because if you try and be somebody that you're not you'll you'll just get you'll just get caught out eventually won't you <laughs> so, you yeah and, and, uh, and i'm delighted and i'm delighted the inner entrepreneur and you find your found your way to setting up your own business because probably that's where it was always going to go wendy wasn't it yeah definitely yeah yeah eventually so, it's gonna happen eventually <laughs> i'm just glad i've done yeah. it now and not waited another 20 years <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and um and i suppose look uh, that, that's great advice so uh yeah so when are there any um sort of documentaries or books or you could recommend our audience go check out uh, my at the moment my kind of favorite documentary type things to watch or, you know all the true crime things so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so all the, the ted bundy and the oj simpson and, and that kind of thing because I, I really like the sort of psychology behind it get into the minds of, of these people that do these things and i think i think in another life i probably would have quite liked to have been a lawyer but oh, that didn't really happen um but i think 
I do sometimes think that maybe I should have looked into booking in forensic accounting because <laughs> I, I, I do love like sort of the legal aspect of, of those kind of issues. So that those are the kind of things I like to watch. Yeah, actually, that's an interesting area. I know Kate, uh, the only reason I know an awful lot about it is because Katie, my wife, she um, she watches those a lot and I might be watching them at the same time. So I don't get any choice in the matter. But <laughs> it's, um, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, we did have a previous guest mentor on who did talk about forensic accounting. So it does sound an interesting area. So um, I encourage folks to check out Ken Fick's podcast on yeah. that one as well. I mean, it, does, really it wasn't something that I really knew what it was when I was sort of yeah. uh, training and studying in my, you know, when I first started out, it was only kind of came to light later on, but by then it was a bit late. <laughs> but, but it is, it is, it is cool to be like in a court or, or submit a report or give testimony as to like what the heck's going on. Yeah, really I like to quite think I could have been one of those like swanning around in a courtroom giving out <laughs> evidence. And <laughs> but yeah, maybe not, maybe in another life. Hey, well, look, at least at least you know now, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you can build that in. Um, and then I, I suppose then, Wendy, if our audience wish to continue the conversation, where's the best place to connect with you at? Um, well, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, Wendy Thompson, Thompson without a P. And uh, I can be found there rambling on about all sorts of, all sorts of stuff. But um, yeah, I'd love to connect with anybody, particularly small business owners or anyone thinking of... Uh, working for themselves that need a little bit of uh, financial support brilliant well wendy look uh, really appreciate you sort of taking us through your experiences there before we sort of wrap up are there any parting thoughts you'd wish to leave with our audience um yeah i think um just the bit that we touched on earlier about technology for me i would i don't think i would have actually done well i may have but i don't think i don't think i would have set this up without embracing, for example, the likes of Zoom for you know online meetings, cloud-based accounting systems. There's, there's so much technology now that allows us to sort of basically run a business from our own living rooms. I'm embracing um, everything I can find um, that will make life easier for me. So I think particularly, like we say, some of the, sort of the old school accountants um, really need to sort of use that to to keep up with the with the changing world really so yeah that's that's kind of my my closing thoughts awesome awesome well wendy look thanks for giving us such a introduction to your career the the lessons you learned there where it might not have started off as most people have this ideal career image but it seems like you found your way to something that you're absolutely loving doing at the moment so absolutely delighted for you and Thanks for coming on the show today and sharing those experiences with our audience. That's great. Thank you very much for having me, Andrew. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to know more about our guests today, their bio, and follow up on the resources mentioned during the show, you can find all the relevant links and more at sitnshow.com. There you'll also be able to get access to earlier shows, read the latest blogs, There's also an opportunity to subscribe to our newsletter, which will give you heads up as to when the next show is coming out, latest events, news, and anything that's going to be relevant to help you have a fun, rewarding, and successful career in finance and accounting. And just before you go, we really appreciate your feedback. If there's something we can do better on the show, something that's not working, or something you'd like to see, even a guest you'd like for us to invite onto the show, someone who you think might be able to benefit you more and also the rest of our community, please let me know. You can email me. I'm at andrew at sitnshow.com or feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Just drop me a message so I know how you found me and we can connect. And really, it's our community that will make the show. If we keep engaging and driving each other on, we'll keep on building our strength in the numbers. When all is said and done, if we can do the numbers better and finance better, we'll create more opportunities for ourselves, our friends, our families, our communities and our businesses. So until next time, have a good rest of the week. Take care and let's keep building our strength in the numbers.